Hey guys, welcome to the new apartment. Still got a lot of kind of decorating and placing things and just figuring things out, putting things together and really making this new place a home, a haven, a safe place, a sanctuary. This recent move really prompted me to pick back up on the series, Make Your Home a Haven, and share with you guys an important topic that came up as I was going through this process of moving into this new space. Do we often think about how these spaces, our environments, affect us? What do they do to us and what do they do for us? A lot of times we get caught up in all the material things like does it have a steel fridge, a clawfoot tub, a gas stove oven, is there a gym attached to the apartment complex? All those little things, don't get me wrong, they're important because they make your space comfortable and you want to be there, it's welcoming, but do we think about those important things? Again, like I said, what can these environments and spaces do for us and to us? And when I say this, I'm talking about how they affect our overall vitality, wellness, and happiness, our well-being, and how do they affect our physical and mental health. So I'm going to be talking about that more in today's video, sharing some tips on how to really think about the spaces and environments we're in and how they affect all of that how to make your environment a little bit better for your physical and mental health, and share some of the challenges and things that I've gone through in this current move and stage of my life. All right, let's go ahead and jump on into today's video. All right, so I've got my notes here so we can stay on topic. This video is gonna be broken into three parts. The first part is what you want your haven to be. What can it provide for you? And then the second part is what was missing for me and my husband and what prompted us to move into our current apartment that I'm in right now. The third part of this video is going to be tips on how you can improve your environment and space for your overall health and wellness. All right, so what do you want your home, your safe place to be? You want it to be a space and environment where you can retreat, where you go to feel comfortable and safe. You know that feeling after a long trip and you're like, oh, I can't wait to get home. Or after a hard day of work, you're like, oh, I am so ready to be home. You want that desire, that joy, that drive to just be in your safe place. That's what you want your home, your safe place and haven to be. A comfortable, safe place where you can retreat to. It's not just somewhere where you live. It's so much more than that. It's gonna offer you comfort and safety. You also want your space to be an environment and a place where you can do what you love, what you want, and what you need to do comfortably without any issues. So that can, can include hobbies, it can include relaxing, self-care, wellness, and we'll get a little bit more into that. And then you also want your space to be a refuge for community and entertaining and also serving others. I think that's an important part of a home. It's creating that energy of just love and protection and kindness, giving. It gives so much back to us spiritually, mentally, and even physically. It can boost your mood and overall wellness. So making sure you have a space or a part of your environment, room, or home that is set up just for community and giving back, for having friends and family over. You also want your haven, your safe place to be a place where you can go when you're not feeling well that will nourish and rebuild you. Again, it comes back to that comfort and safety piece. Is your environment a safe place where you can feel better when you're sick, ill, down in the dumps and you need to recover? Does it have that energy or that space to provide you with that? All right, so now I wanna share what was missing for us and prompted us to move. It was two big ones. One was we just didn't have the space to do what we loved, what we wanted, and what we needed. Though if you're not aware, I run Daily Ritual Boutique out of my apartment, and I also still work a nine to five, and I work from home full time. 
So I didn't have a space in the last apartment to really do those things comfortably and do them well and focus on the things I needed to do. A lot of times I would be working out of the bedroom, but the bedroom is built for so many other things like relaxing, rewind, unwinding, sleeping, making love. Those are things which your bedroom is set up for and not for also working and bringing in that chaotic energy, that stressful energy, that work, 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 do, do, do energy. Um, it's a very different energy from what a room is supposed to be set up for. I also had inventory in our bedroom. Sometimes I was working out in that room. So it threw the energy off and it didn't feel like a comfortable, safe space because I was doing too many things in a very small, confined area. Um, it also wasn't set up from work from home. We didn't have enough outlets. Um, the internet was spotty, it was here and there. I didn't also have the natural daylight to kind of feed me and boost me. We didn't get really good air circulation. And those were all things affected me because I was in that environment for long extended periods of time. Doing hobbies and things that I loved just didn't have the space for it. So I love sewing, I love working out. Um, I do a lot of content creation from home. We just didn't have the space. I did what I could with the space I had and it worked out just fine. But thinking it through before we moved, we should have really spent more time thinking about those things, making sure we had dedicated spaces for work or an area that we could turn into a workspace easily, but then also turn back into the living room. At one point I moved from the bedroom to the living room, my workspace. Um, and that didn't really work out because we'd have people drop by sometimes and I'd be trying to work. Or my husband, he would have certain days he'd work from home and then we we're both trying to do work at the same time, be on calls at the same time. It was just too much chaos. Um, so it wasn't really set up to do what we needed, what we wanted to and what we loved. All right, so the second big thing that prompted us to move was the apartment just wasn't up to date or had the things that we needed to for overall health, wellness, and extended stays. So overall health and wellness, we had mold. I'll just get to it. We had mold in the bathroom. And oftentimes where you find mold in one place in your living space or environment, it's in another. And mold, it is a dirty, nasty thing. It can really mess you up mentally and physically and have negative impacts on your overall health, which it did for me, especially with working from home and running the business and being at home for extended long periods of time and then not being able to get that good air circulation with poor <laughs> windows that didn't fully open all the way um, and the circulation of how things um, the air circulated through the apartment wasn't very good so we didn't get a good breeze or cross ventilation um, good fresh air some windows we couldn't open at all because they were broken or weren't fixed and then the daylight, the natural daylight, the sun, the outdoors, it just feeds your soul, boosts your energy. And I didn't really have that. We had some good daylight in the living room, in the kitchen. The bedroom, it was awful. We had a small window in the bathroom that we always kept open for good ventilation to clear up that mold and mildew. But for overall health and wellness, it was not the business, not the business. Um, and it was really starting to get to me, not just physically, but also mentally being kind of cramped in that kind of environment and space, not being able to do what I needed to, what I wanted to and loved. And, and then again, also that physical piece with the mold and the mildew. Um, I was having problems sleeping at night, constant allergies and sinus issues. Um, my eyes started bothering me to the point where I thought I had blepharitis, where your eyes get crusty and sticky or they feel gritty and rough and dry all the time. I also have an underlying autoimmune issue and it felt like it was exasperating my autoimmune. Um, my cat and even my husband were having allergy issues and just breathing, it was harder to breathe. Um, and overall, after a long period of time, you just, no one can do that. No one should have to do that. So that was definitely a struggle within the health and wellness aspect of living in that apartment that prompted us to have to move. All right, so let's go ahead and talk about tips on how to improve the overall wellness of your space and your environment, especially if you can't move and if you have to work with what you have. So these are tips that I have used over periods of time, especially in our last apartment, and that I will continue to use. And hopefully that'll help you. Dress it up. 
So make it your own. Add some personality, character to your space. What do you like? What do you not like? Are you into relaxing, soothing colors, sounds, textures? Bring that into your environment. Do you like gaming? Set up an area that's fun and full of games. Do you love reading? Maybe you set up a reading nook, build out a bookcase, or maybe you surround your bedroom or your bed with books. Make it your own, because that's where you're really gonna um, build and boost up that comfort level and that safety. And just wanna be in the space, wanna go back to the space and love it. And you'll also wanna live in it. And speaking of living in it, make sure going back to that first part of the video that your space and your environment is able to provide you with the space you need, the energy you need to do the things you want, love, and need. Bring in nature. So bring in plants. It's a great way to clean up the air, detoxify the air, add a boost of green. We all know that nature can improve our overall moods and our wellness, so why not bring it from the outdoors in and improve your mood and wellness indoors as well? An air purifier. This is a game changer. I think everyone, regardless of what your situation is, you should invest in an air purifier. This will help clean the air, make sure you're breathing in good, clean air. I'll make sure to share in the link below two of my favorite air purifiers as well. But you wanna make sure that you're living and staying in an environment where you're breathing fresh, clean air. A lot of times we don't think about all the things that are just floating around us. You've got pet dander, you've got dust and debris, you've even got allergens from outside that you might be bringing in, and then there's the chemicals from the things that are in our home that we are often aren't aware of. I know I've lived in buildings where they've used lead paint, and you've got dust and debris and breakdown from that paint that's just sitting and kind of floating around. So those are some of the things that you don't want in your apartment. Or even if someone gets sick, all the germy germs, all those things can be helped cleared up with a really good air purifier. A dehumidifier. So this is where the mold and the mildew comes in. You wanna make sure you keep that at bay because again, it has major consequences, negative consequences to your overall health and well-being. It can make you very, very sick and we don't want that. I've had experience, as you've heard, with this. So make sure you get a dehumidifier in areas that are humid that can breed mold and mildew to help keep that at bay. And again, I'll make sure to share a link for one of my favorite dehumidifiers that me and my husband have used. We are on our second one. I think we've bought, yeah, we have two of them now, one in the laundry room here and one in the bathroom so that we help keep that moisture out. We keep things dry. And not only that, we keep other things that are in the room nice and dry. So it might be, um, towels, linens. Um, I know my office is also in the laundry room, so keeping all of my paperwork and things like that dry as well and not um, susceptible to breaking down or getting wet. And then of course we keep it in the bathroom because that's where a lot of the condensation and humidity comes from showering and bathing. So making sure we keep that area nice and dry and clear of that so that we don't get a lot of condensation that can ruin the foundation and the walls and breed that bacteria, that mold and mildew and eventually possibly make us sick. A dehumidifier is also great for any of you that live in a humid environment. Help to keep your overall environment inside nice, dry, and comfortable. Opening windows. Make sure you have good working windows that you can open because it's always nice to get in actual fresh air and circulate it through your environment so you're not sitting in that stale, stagnant, dusty, mildewy, Lord knows what kind of air. You wanna make sure you're getting fresh air in at all times. Me and my husband make sure to keep some kind of window cracked no matter what the season is and open so we get some good, clean, fresh air circulating throughout the environment in our space. Cleaning. You're like, I clean, but I really want you to focus on dusting and vacuuming. Make sure you're doing it every week so you're removing that pet dander, that dust, those allergens out of your environment so that you can breathe easier. That plus the air purifier can do wonders and then opening windows. You can really keep a good, fresh, clean, healthy environment. 
And when it comes to cleaning, make sure you're using less chemicals. Me and my husband have switched to natural cleaning agents instead of using a lot of chemicals because the chemicals can stay in the air, they can get on your skin, they can leach into your materials and be all around the house and you don't want that. So one of my favorites is Bonami. It's a natural cleaner. It's kind of like a natural version of Ajax. We also used to use um, white vinegar. That's a good one as well as baking soda and borax. So opt for natural cleaners whenever you can. Microfiber towels, cotton towels as well are great for dusting and cleaning and wiping down things as well. All right, so there you go. We went over what you want your home, your haven, your safe place to be, why me and my husband moved, what prompted us to move, what we were going through, and then I shared a few tips with you to help make your overall environment and space a place of well-being, to help boost your physical wellness and happiness and comfort. If you like this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up. I would love to hear from you what your tips are. Make sure to share below and with the community because I'm always open to learning more and doing things better and just making my home a haven, making it a comfortable, safe place that I love being in. All right, if you're not a friend, make sure to join the journey and subscribe. I look forward to seeing you guys in the next video and sharing more of my new space with you and how to make your space a home, a haven, a comfortable, safe place. All right, till next time, with love and wellness, I'll see you guys later.